Hi everyone, this is part two for our video lecture on integration by parts. Now the topic in this video is problems that involve repeated integration by parts. So how do we do them? Well, as the name says, we're going to have to use integration by parts multiple times. So let's take a look at one example of them. Now one very classical example is an integral of the form x squared times the sine of 2x dx. Alright, so if we take a look at this integral here, well we can get to see here that a normal u substitution is not going to work nicely, so we're going to go ahead and use integration by parts. Now which one here is a better choice of u? The sine of 2x or the x squared? Well, as you might have guessed, the u defined here as x squared is probably going to be the better choice here because once we take the derivative, we're getting a simpler function 2x dx. So it means here then that our dv is going to be the sine of 2x dx. Alright, so now that we define here our dv, what is our v here? Well then the v is going to be the integral of the sine of 2x. Now this problem in itself requires to use a u substitution, so if you define the u as 2x, then v should be equals to a 1 half times the integral of the sine of u du, which is equals to the integral of the sine of u is a cosine, negative, so we're going to have here a negative 1 half cosine of u, which was 2x. And remember, we don't need to add the plus c, only till the end. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete the intermediate steps here to save a little bit of room. So we know here that b was the 1 half, negative 1 half cosine of 2x. So now I'm going to go ahead and put everything together. The integral of x squared times the sine of 2x dx is going to be equals to our u times our v, which was the x squared times the negative 1 half cosine of 2x, minus the integral of our v du, now v times du, well you see here that the twos would cancel. Now we also have a negative here, another negative outside the integral, so I'm going to have a plus the integral of an x times a cosine of 2x. Now notice here that we're left with another integral here that will require us to use integration by parts here. We cannot solve this one here with a u substitution, so we require integration by parts again. Oh no, this problem is becoming longer. <laughs> now we'll see here guys, let's see. Alright, so for this new integral we need to go ahead and define our u again, but the nice thing about this one here is that, well, we don't need to think too much about our u's because it's going to be very similar to the previous integrals. So for this one here I'm going to go ahead and define the u as dx, so our du is going to be a 1 dx. So at least that's looking a little bit better. Alrighty, now in this case, then our dv is going to be the cosine of 2x dx. Alrighty, now performing a very similar integral to the same one that we did to obtain the first v. The v here is now going to be the integral of the cosine of 2x, which should give us now, well I guess I'll put it here, if the u for the u substitution involving the integral of the cosine of 2x is 2x, then our v here is going to be a 1 half times the integral of the cosine of u du, which is just going to give us here a 1 half times the integral of the cosine, which is a sine, so it's going to be a sine of u, so in this case it's a sine of 2x. Alrighty, so doing the integration by parts here, now keeping in mind that we already did integration by parts once, and it gave us this term here, which I'm going to go ahead and color code, put it in orange. Alright, so carrying it down here, we're going to have a negative 1 half x squared cosine of 2x plus, alright now let's see what we got for the integration by parts of the second integral. We had a u times v, so that's an x times a 1 half sine of 2x, so I'll put here, put the 1 half into the front here of x, sine of 2x minus the integral, alright so minus our v du, which is going to be a 1 half times the integral of sine of 2x dx. Alright, so we have one more integral to solve here. However, this one, there is no need for integration by parts now. So that's great. Let's work here. Alright, now what is the integral of the sine of 2x? Well, this one here is very similar. Well, in fact, it's the same dv as the first dv. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy our results. So our final answer here is going to be equals to 
negative one half x squared times the cosine of two x plus a one half x times the sine of two x minus, now we're gonna have here a one half times, well what is the integral or what was the integral of sine of two x dx? Well we got here a negative one half cosine of two x. Now we can simplify this a little bit further. We basically have a negative one half times a negative one half. So simplifying that, we're gonna get here a positive one fourth cosine of two x. And there we go. All right now before we try another problem here, I wanna give you guys a, a warning or a word of caution. Whenever you're dealing with problems that involve repeated integration by parts, we have to be really careful with the negatives or coefficients in front of the integral that may arise from an integration by parts. So for example here, when we did the first integration by parts and we got our dv, well notice that the twos canceled out and the negatives canceled out to give us simply a plus times the integral of x times the cosine of two x. If this one here would have been a negative, then we needed to carry this negative to all of the terms that we would have gotten here from the second integration by parts. If it was another number here, then well, that number, that factor would have also carried over. And in fact, we saw one carried over, not a problem that, not a coefficient that resulted strictly from an integration by parts, but we did see a one half come out here from the integral, and this one half was carried over to the result of the integral of the sine of two x. That's how we got here a positive one fourth. So again, this ones here are sometimes easy to miss or maybe to drop negatives especially, but I'm gonna show you right now another approach that can help remedy all of the convoluted steps with the repeated integration by parts. All right, so let's take a look at another example here with repeated integration by parts, but as I mentioned right now, I'm gonna show you a different approach, a much quicker approach. Now this new approach is known as the tabular method. All right, so let's say that we were dealing with the integral of x cubed times the sine of two x. Now this problem here is very similar to the one that we just tried above, where we had the x squared of the sine of two x. Now, the fact that this one has an x cubed here just means that we would need to use integration by parts one more additional time in order to get the answer. Now, I don't really wanna do that one here, because again, as I mentioned, it's, it's a little bit tedious. So I'm gonna use instead this new approach known as the tabular method. So what is this tabular method? Well, the tabular method here, as the name somewhat says here, is that, okay, well, we need to create a table. Now, when we create this table here, I'm gonna create two columns. One column here is going to have our u's, and the other column here is going to have the dv's. Now, we, need, we still need to select the u and the v as we would normally use with, or as we would normally do with the integration by parts. So as we did in the previous problem, the u here is gonna be the x raised to a power. So in this case, it's gonna be an x cubed and the dv is going to be the sine of two x. Now that we defined them here, this is what we're gonna be doing. This is what we're gonna be doing. For the u's, we're gonna go ahead and start to take the derivative. So the first derivative would be a three x squared then the next derivative here is going to be a six x. The next derivative is going to be a six. And lastly, the next derivative is going to be a zero. All right, so basically we were taking the derivative every single time. Now for the v's, we're gonna be doing the opposite. We wanna integrate the dv's. So we're gonna be integrating the sine of two x, which as we did before, the sine of two x, the integral is going to be a negative one half times the cosine of two x. And again, this time around, we are integrating the dv's. Now the next integral here, now it could be a little bit trickier. We had a negative one half from the previous integral. Now what is the integral of the cosine of two x? Well, the integral for the cosine of two x is going to be a one half times the sine of two x. Okay, now this one here, we can go ahead and simplify it. Negative one half times one half is going to be a negative one fourth. So I'll simplify it here as a negative one fourth. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and continue. The integral of the negative one fourth times the sine of two x is going to be 
the negative one fourth carried over from the previous integral times the integral of the sine of two x. Now this one here, we just did it again. It's, well, we did it before. So this one here is going to be a one half times the negative cosine of two x. So put here negative cosine of two x. All right, now simplifying it once more, a negative one fourth times a negative one half should give us a positive one eighth. All right, so if, now this one here is a little bit clear, guys, because I don't have a grid line, but basically this was one step here, another step, another step, another step. So for the zero, we're gonna have another step. So we need one more integral. So we're gonna have here the integral of one eighth times the cosine of two x. So the one eighth was carried over times the integral of the cosine of two x. So this one here is gonna give us a one half sine of two x. All right, now simplifying things a little bit further here, one eighth times one half should give us a one sixteenth. Okay, now I'm just gonna move this one here a little bit further up. All right, so we have here a table with all their u's and all the dv's. So what now? Well, now here's a trick that we're gonna be using. Whenever we're using the tabular method, we are gonna be multiplying the u times the b here in a diagonal approach. This is the first u times the first v, then the next u times the next v, then we repeat the pattern here, and there we go. So we're gonna be multiplying this one's out here, but once we're multiplying, remember whenever we were doing the integration by parts, we were always subtracting by the integral here of v du. So this subtraction is gonna come into play in the following way. This first diagonal here is gonna be multiplying, but it's gonna be multiplying with a positive. The next diagonal here is gonna be multiplying with a negative. The next one here with a positive. Next one here with a negative. So you see you are going to be alternating the signs. Alrighty, so now that we established a pattern here, let's go ahead and get the result. So the integral of x cubed times the sine of two x is gonna be equals to an x cubed times a negative one half cosine of two x. Now a three x squared times a negative negative one fourth sine of two x. So negative and negative is gonna give us a positive. So plus three fourths x squared times sine of two x. Now for the next one here, we're gonna have a six x times a positive one eighth cosine of two x. So back to another, well, not back to, but another positive here plus. Now six over eight, I'll put here six over eight. Well, that's the same thing here as three fourths. So we're gonna have here a three fourths x times the cosine of two x. All right, now lastly, we're gonna have here a six times a negative one sixteenth sine of two x. And now that's gonna give us here a negative now six over 16, divide both of them by two, we should get a three eighths, then sine of two x. And don't forget the plus c here. Alrighty, so this is a tabular approach. Now, are you doing less work? I mean, you're still doing multiple integrals, but we don't have to write each separate line of work here to represent the multiple integration by parts. You get all of them done in one sweep, I really, really like this approach, guys. So whenever you notice that it's a problem that you may have to use repeated integration by parts, go for the tabular method much, much quicker. Now, I'll leave you guys some, not homework, but I'll give you guys the opportunity to work on this problem here, the integral of x squared times sine of two x, using the tabular method to verify our result here. Alrighty. Now let's take a look at another set of problems that require us to use repeated integration by parts. And this one's here are integrals of the form e raised to the ax times either a sine of x or a cosine of x. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at these problems. Now, the key to these problems is to treat them as an equation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look here at this first integral where we have the integral of e to the two x times the sine of x dx. Alrighty, now this is the first integral of this form that we have encountered. So how do we know which 
u should we select? Well, for this type of integrals, we have a choice here. If we let u equals to e to the 2x, then our du is gonna be equals to a 2 e to the 2x dx. Now, if we let the u equals to the sine of x, then our du is gonna be equals to a cosine of x dx. So you notice here, there isn't too much of a difference. However, when we start thinking about the dv's, if I let the u equals to the sine of x, and that would mean that the dve is equals to e to the 2x. Now integrating this one here is really not too bad. The integral here is gonna be a 1 half e to the 2x. However, I don't really wanna go ahead and deal with fractions. So I'm not gonna go ahead and let the u be the sine of x. Instead, I'll let the u equals to the e to the 2x. Now if that's the case here then, our dv is gonna be equals to the sine of x, but when we integrate the sine of x, we're gonna have here a negative cosine of x. No fractions here, so I'll stay with this election here. Okay, now, going ahead to solve the integral, Let's see, using integration by parts, we're gonna get here our u times v, so we're gonna have an e to the 2x times a cosine, or times a negative cosine, which is gonna give us here a negative cosine of x, minus the integral of v du. So we're gonna have here a negative cosine times the two e to the two x dx. All right, now at this point here, simplifying the integral, we have a negative and a negative, so that means that we're gonna have a positive here. And taking the two out of the integral here, so we're gonna have here plus the integral of e to the 2x times the cosine of x dx. Alrighty, now notice here though that, well, we're still left with an e to the 2x times the cosine of x. So this problem here require us to use integration by parts again. Now continuing on with our same choices for u's and dv's, we're gonna have here the u as e to the 2x, the du equals to two times e to the 2x dx, and now the dv here is gonna be equals to the cosine of x, so then our v is equals to the sine of x. Now, I want you guys to notice something here. We use integration by parts again, but this example is very different than the one that we just tried because our u's are not really gonna get any simpler. If we tried to use the tabular method, we would keep on going, we would keep on differentiating the e to the 2x without ever really stopping, we would never reach zero. And the same thing here would happen with the integrals for the trick functions, we'd just be going around in circles. So what can we do? Well, for this one here, humor me a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and keep on using integration by parts. Maybe some magic will happen, some math magic will happen. Let's see here, so, so far we have the negative e to the two x times the cosine of x that came out on our first u times v, I'll put this one here in orange. So we're gonna have here a negative e to the two x cosine of x plus a two that came out. Now this two here is outside the integral. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a purple color because it's gonna come into play because it's gonna be multiplying whatever we get from the integral of e to the two x times cosine of x. So that one here is gonna be a two times, all right, so what did we get from our new integration by parts? a u times v, which is gonna be an e to the x times the sine of x minus the integral of our v du. So the v here was a sine of x and the du was two times e to the two x. So we're gonna have here times two e to the two x dx. All right, so again, rearranging the integral. There's a two here that's a constant. I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside here and rearrange the integral inside. Because we don't really need to, but I always like to put them in this form. And I'm gonna go ahead and close the bracket here. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the two. So we're gonna get, well, let's go ahead and put the left-hand side as well. We have the integral of e to the two x, sine of x dx on the left-hand side. All right, so we're gonna have here the integral of e to the two x times sine of x dx is gonna be equals to a negative e to the 2x cosine of x 
plus a two e to the two x sine of x minus a four times the integral of e to the two x sine of x dx. Alrighty, so what can we do here? Does that mean that we're gonna need to take integration by parts again? Well, lucky for us, not really because notice here that we have an e to the two x sine of x, well the integral of e to the two x sine of x on the right hand side, but we also have it here on the left hand side. So we actually have some like terms, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine them here by adding a four times the integral of e to the two x times sine of x on both sides of the equation. Now this gets rid of it on the right hand side, but now on the left hand side we have five times the integral of e to the two x sine of x dx equals to a negative e to the two x times the cosine of x plus two times e to the sine of x. So we're very close to being done here. We wanna get, we wanted to figure out what the integral is. Right now the integral is being multiplied by a five, but lucky for us, that's a very easy fix. All that we need to do here is now divide by a five. And there we go. We have our answer the integral of e to the two x times sine of x is equals to the negative e to the two x times the cosine of x divided by five plus two times e to the two x times sine of x divided by five. And that's it. We got our answer. So notice that we had to use integration by parts multiple times, but the benefit of treating the integral as an equation meant that, hey, well, if you got some like terms, you can always combine them and that's how we got our final result. Very clever approach here. Alrighty guys, so this is it for part two. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at definite integrals involving integration by parts and some application problems. I'll see you there.